All right, so we're going to talk about the infamous unit circle. And as you have learned in the past in Algebra 2, the unit circle is just a resource, another way of looking at angles in how we um, approach trig, and how, especially sine and cosine. And just gives us a, a neat little reference for each of those kind of scenarios. And so um, one of the main things that I want you to understand is that typically we use the unit circle in terms of radians. And so we need to be obviously very comfortable with radians, which we certainly are by now. Um, but the idea of the unit circle is that the angle measure is equal to the arc. And the arc, by the arc, I mean the curved part of the circle. So the angle that we see here, this between the joining of these two rays, is the same. That angle that is between them is the same as the length of the arc. That is the beauty of the unit circle. And typically, we use S to express arc, or the length of the arc. Um, and so we use theta, in this case, to express the angle. And so what we're saying is that the arc equals the angle. And hopefully you have seen this equation before, S equals R theta, where R represents the radius. And so this should make sense to you that we are talking about a unit circle, which simply is saying that the radius is equal to 1. So if I said that R was 1, doesn't it make sense that S equals theta? And hopefully that, that does, in fact, make sense. So as you're doing this quest these questions, that's something to keep in mind. Now, the second piece of this that you need to understand is that the arc length in the circle does not have to have, um, it doesn't have to have a radius of 1. Unit circle is specifically when the radius is 1. But we can take various fractions of this unit circle and scale them up in order to have different radius so that you could see what happens. This is kind of like the root or the foundation of everything. And so um, we can have angles such as, and let's just talk about, whoa, I guess that didn't work like I wanted it to. Sorry about that. Um, that basically, you know, we could start at zero. We could come straight up here. And of course, that's 90 or pi over two. Coming around to here to pi to this direction, which is three pi over two to this, which is 0 or 2 pi. If we went in this direction, this could be negative pi over 2, negative pi, negative 3 pi over 2, and negative 2 pi. Again, remember that with the unit circle, the radius is, in fact, 1. OK, so let's kind of move from there. There are these certain angles that we need to know, right, that we've used even in, within our chart. And so this lovely picture that you see in front of you is going to become like second nature to you. In fact, we're going to be quizzing on it every single day until everyone gets a 100 on it. Um, we're going to expand on it tomorrow. But for today, the intention is that you're going to at least understand the placement of where these angles are. Once again, this is at 0. So if the, the rays were joined here, it's 0. Or it could mean that you went all the way around the circle and came back, which of course is 360 or 2 pi. Pi over 6 is the first angle. This of course means 30 degrees, right? 180 divided by 6, right? Um, pi over 4 is your 45. Pi over 3. Here at the top, we have pi over 2, as we were just talking about. Now, as we get into the next quadrants, how we find the other quadrants, we should already know how this works, right? You basically are going to look at each of those reference angles and say, okay, pi over 3 2 pi over 3 would be its second quadrant angle, and that falls right here at F. Then at G would be the pi over 4 angle that falls in the second quadrant, and so pi over 4, 2 pi over 4 simplifies, 3 pi over 4 does not, that makes this 3 pi over 4. Now to your pi over 6, not 2, not 3, not 4, but 5 pi over 6, because that's the first one that does not simplify. I obviously represents pi, or 180, and to continue on, J represents the pi over 6 angle in the third quadrant, which is 7 pi over 6. Um, K would be 5 pi over 4. L is your pi over 3 angle that's here, so that's 4 pi over 3. Again, that brings us to 270 degrees or 3 pi over 2. Moving right along, we have 5 pi over 3. We have 7 pi over 4. And we have, of course, 11 pi over 6. If you Think about this. By the time you get to 2 pi, 
we basically are looking at 11 over 6. That doesn't, you know, 12 over 6 is what would give us 2 pi. If you, for some reason, miscalculated or understand that once you get to 2 pi, you better have gotten all four of those angles. Does that make sense? I hope so. So, so with that in mind, let's think about degrees versus radians and what that looks like because we've got to get quite familiar with how to, you know, translate that. If somebody said I had a 140 degrees or 170 degrees or whatever, we got to be able to convert from each of those. And so I want to remind you that basically we're going to deal with, um, you know, this is 0 and 360, right? And this is 90 and this is 180 and this is 270 degrees. But how do we, in fact, com you know, basically convert from one to the other? And so let's just take a, just a quick minute to venture that out. If I said I wanted 270 degrees and I wanted to know what it was in radians, how do we do that? Does anybody remember? My hope is that your thought is about a ratio. Degrees to radians or vice versa. We can even say radians to degrees, whichever way you want to do that. And so what that would look like is if I know that I have 270 degrees, right? We do not know what that is in terms of radians. That would equal, now we have to figure out a ratio that we do know. For example, I know that 180 degrees is pi radians. And using that information, we can solve for x. And so I would say, okay, that's 270 pi and 180x. And so to solve, I would then divide by 180, correct? And so I'd say, okay, so that means x equals. And my hope is that you can see that both of these can be divided by 90. And so if I divide them by 90, I would get 3 pi over 2. Ta-da! And that's, of course, what it would be. This can go for any number of scenarios. Let's say I had 75 and I just didn't know what that was. Well, then we're going to use the same idea. We don't know what radian that is. Um, but we do know that 180 degrees is pi. And so I'm going to use that ratio to solve that out. So I'd have x, or sorry, 180x equals 75 pi. And then I'm going to divide by 180 to figure out what that is. Simplify it, of course, if you can. So hopefully that makes sense to you, that the idea is that when you're talking about degrees versus radians, degrees just allows us to be a little bit more accurate because we're not dealing with decimals and, um, and repeating decimals and all of that good stuff, that we basically want to make sure you understand, one, how to convert them, but two, understand what they are, in fact, in degrees. And they, that should kind of follow along with that. All right, let's take it another step. We talked about the fact that if the radius e equals 1, then we know that the angle and the arc are exactly the same. Okay? So in this particular case, we would say to ourselves, all right, um, I'm looking at this angle, and it looks to me like that's 90 degrees, or rather, right, and we want to express it in radians, not in degrees. Everything is done in radians. That's how we can express the arc and measure. So this, right, this here is pi over 2. That's what the angle measure would be here. And so that means that when the radius is 1, if that's saying that the radius is 1, then the arc measure we know is exactly the same. Well, now I want you to think about this. If I'm now looking at this larger circle here on the outside, do you follow the fact that we do in fact have the same angle? The angle has not changed. It's still pi over 2. But if the radius is now 5, do you follow that the arc is definitely not the same measure? So we can't say, oh, well, it's also pi over 2. That doesn't even make sense. That measure has just gotten significantly larger, hasn't it? And so how much larger do you think? It is, in fact, 5 times as large. It would be 5 pi over 2. Doesn't that make sense? And if it relates back to the very first part of this lesson, s equals r theta, then it should make sense to you, oh, the radius times the angle. And that's exactly what the measure of that arc is. And that's my hope. But really, it's as simple as that. So let's do a few examples here. All right. A circle has a radius of 4. Find the length of half the circle, quarter of the circle, eighth of the circle. I'm sorry, these all shifted here. Pi radians. Let's see if I can move this guy. Uh, pi over 2 radian and pi over 4 radian. Okay, so let's answer this question. So the first thing is, if we have a circle with a radius of 4, I want you to just think about what would half the circle so if I know that the radius is 4, what would half of the circle be? How do we figure that out? How would we figure out what this 
arc is, right? How do we figure out the length of that? Well, there's a couple ways to think about this, okay? And remember, I hope you remember the good old-fashioned equations that you learned way back in the day, probably as early as fifth or sixth grade, that circumference equals pi times the diameter, and area is pi r squared. Well, we're not talking about area. We're talking about the length of the arc. So that's obviously involving our circumference. Now, I want you to relate this to what we're doing right now, because whether you realize it or not, c, or circumference, is representing that arc, otherwise known as s, right? What is this angle here? Pi, right? Pi times the diameter. Ooh. Or rather, I mean, just watch this. This is beautiful. If I want the circumference of the whole circle, let's relate this. That's pi. Um, diameter is 2 times the radius, right? That's what that is. So another way of writing this is 2 pi r. In other words, if I want the length of the whole circle, I would do 2 pi, which is the angle, times the radius. Or think again, s equals r theta. What's theta that they'd be talking about for the whole circle? 2 pi. That equation actually is s equals r theta in a way that you understood at that point in time. So um, let's do this again. Half a circle. I want half a circle, right? I want to know how much this is. Well, if I know that the whole circle is going to be 2 times 4, in other words, it's 8 pi. Are you following that? The whole circle is 8 pi. Then half the circle is going to be 4 pi. How about a quarter of the circle? Well, we just divide 8 pi by 4, so we get 2 pi. What about an eighth of a circle? Well, that's 8 pi divided by 8, so it makes sense that that's just pi. At least I hope it does make sense. Now let's change the direction of this question. So when we're talking about of the circle, we could say, all right, right, let's our reference is the whole circle, and let's just cut it in half or cut it into fourths or cut it into eighths. All right, even if I said a sixth, well, we just do 8 pi divided by 6. No big deal. But if I instead give it to you in the form of the angle direction here, so the angle is pi radians. Well, to be quite honest, pi is half of the circle, is it not? So really, this is the same question as A. But let's see how to answer this question. Again, back to S equals R theta. The radius is 4. The angle is pi. That's what the angle is at half the circle. So the answer would be 4 pi. How about pi over 2? What is the angle here? It's pi over 2, correct? So if I'm going to do the radius, which is 4, times pi over 2. And what do I get? 2 pi. Again, this is the same question as B. Or pi over 4. Well, I do 4 times pi over 4, and we get pi. The basic idea is, you know, you know the angles around that circle. And if you're going to change the radius, all you have to do is scale it up, so to speak. Just multiply by the radius, and that's it. Um, it really is that simple. So hopefully, um, this is just an introductory lesson, and this is basically in place if you had missed class um, at the time in which I introduced this.